Enter the baller world of Hotlanta. Wow. Where rap icons, movie moguls... So fantastic. ...and real housewives... We live in Atlanta. ...are living the southern fried American dream. And as you can see, we reign supreme. From record-setting swag... It has gone down as most expensive sneakers in the world. ...to one-of-a-kind rides... Only two were made as concept cars and invite-only parties. You gotta party somewhere. The exotic dancers, keep show booths, and body painting. The forecast calls for players making it rain. This is $10,000, and this is the bare minimum to make it tsunami. Stand up! So forget 90210. We have to be in the eight. The biggest stars on the planet are snatching up mega mansions. And everything else fly in 30305. Yeah! This is the fabulous life of Atlanta, y'all. When it comes to celebrity real estate, Atlanta is the new thing. It's cool to have that New York address and that Beverly Hills address, but in Atlanta you're going to get space, space, space. Take a look at T.I.'s five-bedroom, seven-bath, $4.3 million gated estate. And this 9,000-square-foot castle owned by music mogul Akon. Or rapper Young Jeezy's $2 million palace in the sky. So you know what it is. I'll let you boy. For these Atlanta celebs, a cozy pied a simply won't do. Take Tyler Perry. When the future star moved to Atlanta in the mid-90s, he was living in his car. Today, the creator and star of the wildly successful Medea movie franchise resides in a mammoth 30,000 square foot palace in the Tony Enclave of Buckhead. Tyler Perry's current home is on 17 beautiful wooded acres. And it is absolutely stunning. The $35 million hotel-sized manse boasts 26 rooms, an Olympic-sized infinity pool, and three levels of manicured gardens. And when the media tycoon needs to take a meeting in Hollywood, there's no waiting in pesky airport security lines. He just steps out his front door. Tyler Perry has a landing strip right on his property, so at any time he can pop in his private jet and go anywhere he wants to go. I want this to be a best kept secret, continue to be kept secret. Tyler Perry may be known as a movie mogul, but he's actually a real estate tycoon. That's right. The star is not only making millions from his films, he's also cleaning up in the real estate game. Case in point, he purchased Dean Gardens for $7.6 million. The legendary 32,000-square-foot Atlanta home sits on 58 acres and has a conservatory, an amphitheater, and a wedding chapel. Tyler decided to trade up for this sprawling 58-acre estate called Dean Gardens. It's this coral estate that overlooks the Chattahoochee River. But Mr. Perry never even lived there. He flipped it for cold, hard cash. A staggering $10 million. This guy can't stop making money. Uh, we'll see what happens. And when Tyler Perry wants to escape Atlanta, the movie magnate doesn't head for Club Med. He retreats to his own private Caribbean island. Purchased for a cool $7 million, the 25-acre hideaway houses a 14,000-square-foot Bali-style home, six guest bungalows, a spa, and a marina. As Medea might say, you crazy as hell. It's a beach with sand and water. <laughs> for Atlanta celebs, buying a home isn't just about size, it's also about quantity. Just ask Ludacris. Feeling real good right about now. I couldn't feel better, you know? Tonight I'm gonna do everything that I
that I want with you. The multi-Grammy winning rap icon owns a remarkable five luxury estates in his hometown. And as you can see, we reign supreme. The total price tag of his real estate portfolio, an estimated $12 million. Ludacris loves himself from Atlanta. He literally has a house for every day of the work week. But he only actually lives in two. So what's the deal with Luda's other three homes? Oh. Let's just say his inner posse ain't slumming it in Atlanta. The rest are just throwaways, you know, for my friends, my family that comes into town. What? It's really, really nice to be a friend or a family member of Ludacris. Luda's main home is a sumptuous 10,000 square foot palace that he purchased for three million dollars with amenities fit for a rap king. Ludacris has everything any man could possibly need on earth in his main home in Atlanta. He's got a tennis court, a basketball court, not one, not two, but three pools. Who can possibly swim that much? It's almost like a, a dream come true. When rap impresario Rick Ross was looking to expand his Maybach music empire in early 2014, the Florida native went talent searching yeah, 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 yeah. and house hunting in the Big A. Happy to be in the a. Rick Ross has made Atlanta his second home. He's very well known for being from Miami, but Atlanta is where you gotta go. I'm the biggest boss that you've seen thus far. Ten black made backs back to back in the lane. That's right. ATL is where it's happening in hip hop. So to be closer to the action, Da Boss dropped a reported six mil for a 45,000 square foot behemoth once owned by Evander Holyfield. Sitting on 235 sprawling acres, it's the largest private residence in the entire state of Georgia. At 45,000 square feet, Rick Ross's house is 20 times the size of the average American home. No, that's it. And you better believe the interior lives up to the hype. There are 12 bedrooms, 21 bathrooms, a bowling alley, and a 135-seat home theater. A staggering 109 rooms in all. This house has a pool that can fit 365,000 gallons of water. It is the largest pool for a private home in the United States, so just imagine the pool party Rick Ross is about to have at this place. And I'm just so I'm enjoying myself. The estate is so enormous that it reportedly costs a million dollars a year to maintain. Rick Ross better keep those hits coming. Coming up, cross the velvet ropes into the most exclusive party in Atlanta. He, like, really went all out for this thing. It reportedly cost $100,000. You got a party somewhere. Plus, a fairy tale Georgia wedding. This was over the top. And find out why the ATL is the strip club capital of America. One of our VIP rooms comes with a barber shop with their own barber. They can get about 10 girls in here to dance for them. All that and more on the fabulous life of Atlanta. In Atlanta, people work hard, but they play harder. And if you want to have a good time, A-Town is the place to do it. With mega clubs like the Velvet Room, Mansion Ilan, and Compound, the biggest stars in the world head to the Peach State to party Dirty South style. If you want to party hard in Atlanta, you need some serious cash. This is for ballers only. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get my swag, get my swag. Ballers like hip-hop star Fabulous. The rapper may be from Brooklyn, but when he wants to get his party on, he heads to Hotlanta. You make me better. Fabulous was at the biggest, best, most awesome club in Atlanta, Club Compound, celebrating his friend's birthday, and he dropped a whopping $45,000. So what does 45 grand get you in Atlanta? A whole lot of bubbly. Spending $45,000 on champagne isn't just popping a bottle or two. It's filling an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The club came out with this entire display that kind of looked like a bathtub filled with Moet Rosé. $45,000? Like, you could get a Beamer for that. That yeah, comes with the territory of being who I am. So. When boxing champ Floyd Mayweather hits the hotspots in Atlanta... <laughs> 
balls deep with cold hard cash. When he goes out in Atlanta and he parties, he actually brings duffel bags filled with money. So he has about $60,000 in a light night, but if it's a great night, he might have like a million dollars on him. Pretty Boy Floyd was recently at Atlanta's Velvet Room with stacks of Benjamins. But he wasn't buying champagne or caviar. Mayweather was partying with Gucci Mane and he had stacks of hundreds that he just started burning. You know you got too much money when you just can burn it up in the club. It's about giving the fans what they want to see. When Atlanta hometown boy T.I. was released from prison in 2011, his pal Diddy threw him a get out of jail party. But this soiree was anything but free. Diddy threw him a welcome home brudge, you know, keeping it classy like he does. He, like, really went all out for this thing. It reportedly cost $100,000. That's an expensive brunch. Yeah. We have VIP tonight. All drinks on me. All drinks on me. Diddy gifted all 150 guests with their own bottle of premium Ciroc vodka. The cost? $9,000. There was a $20,000 gourmet menu and $8,000 worth of desserts. That's a lot of peach cobbler. And because T.I. has a clothing company called Aku, VIP guests were measured before the party and then they were gifted with custom clothes. After this, you got to party somewhere. Every fall, the hottest names in music descend on Atlanta for one of the biggest celebrity blowouts of the year, the BET Hip Hop Awards. The BET Hip Hop Awards are to Atlanta, but the Oscars are to LA, and every major rapper throws a big blowout. I'm gonna do my fuck best with a knife. And unless you're a VIP, you can forget about getting past the velvet ropes, because these are invite-only extravaganzas. In 2013, rapper T.I. threw one of the biggest bashes to date. T.I.'s 33rd birthday was at the same time, so he had a combined birthday bash and after party. The Peep Show-themed spectacle had a star-studded guest list, including Diddy, Nelly, Tyrese, Brandy, and Jennifer Hudson. There were exotic dancers, strippers on poles, peep show booths, and body painting. This was over the top. The cost for the bawdy birthday bash? A reported $50,000. Now that's an extra happy birthday. I'm hot and I'm desirable and I'm, and, and I'm just, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm smashing. And it's not just hip hoppers that know how to go big in the South. Some of the biggest reality stars you love to hate are living the ATL dream. Take this real housewife. I'm from Atlanta. Nene Leakes interreported one million dollar contract for her show, making her the highest paid homemaker in the country. Oh, hell no. <laughs> So naturally, when she remarried her ex-husband Greg in June of 2013, the Georgia Peach threw herself an elaborate wedding to match her considerable income. The 10-tier wedding cake was flown first class from New York to Atlanta at a cost of $15,000. She dropped 50 grand on her Barachi wedding dress. For the reception, the blushing bride changed into a $20,000 Penina Tornay gown. The total cost of the wedding? A very real $1.8 million. Oh, because we have a second chance at love. The A is not just the hip-hop capital of America, it's also the strip club capital. And in Atlanta, a gentleman's club is more than just TNA, it's A&R. Strip clubs are so important to hip-hop music that record labels and rappers actually use them as a testing ground for new music. Because if it's hot at the strip club, it's going to be hot on the charts. And in a town known for its strip clubs, the creme de la creme is Diamonds, a place where wealthy gentlemen rappers drop cash to see women drop trow. We have the best girls here in Atlanta.
We're just the go-to place because we have the best of everything. That's right. At Diamonds, patrons can enjoy more than just lap dances, like one of the $5,000 full-service VIP suites. One of our VIP rooms comes with a barber shop with their own barber. They can get about 10 girls in here to dance for them in our sky suite in the VIP, which is like in the air, right in the middle of everyone, across a glass catwalk. The shower room is kind of where you go. You want to have like, you know, one girl, two or three, kind of soaking each other up. I mean, they shower. <laughs> And when celebrities hit up diamonds, they give new meaning to the term making it rain. Ludacris spent 20 grand in an hour. Just anything out of the ordinary I can do that's just crazy. I like just being different. Fabulous, 28,000. And Floyd Mayweather made it rain to the tune of 50 Gs. He was just nonstop throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. The chandeliers were definitely dripping with dollars. When rapper T.I. drops by Diamonds, the self-proclaimed king of the South is treated like, well, royalty. He just wanted his money brought out on a platter, and it was a real royal way to spend your money. T.I., that night, he had to spend at least 20 grand in a matter of 30 minutes. All hail the king. That's just our culture here. We love to make it rain. Gentlemen, take note, because here's the 411 on how to make it rain like a celebrity baller. You have different levels of making it rain. You have making it rain, which is like, eh, you know, $1,000. You have thunderstorm, which is more like $5,000. This is $10,000, and this is the bare minimum to make it tsunami. And one of the biggest Atlanta tsunamis was a visit from Lil Wayne and Birdman. I mean, it was over $150,000 spent that night in singles. You couldn't even see the floor. Like, it, we were walking on a money floor. The duo dropped another 100 k on 400 bottles of Ace of Spades champagne, bringing the total for the night to $250,000. Cha-ching. Coming up, a record-breaking diamond pendant. It's over seven and a half inches tall and weighs over five pounds. Yeah! Plus, a sneaker worth its weight in gold. 13 carats are intricately sewn into the shoe using gold lace. And later, find out how celebs put their sick rides to the test. He rented out the entire Atlanta Motor Speedway. Come on, man. That's crazy. When the fabulous life of Atlanta returns. Hip-hop artists are known for their bling, but in Atlanta, these guys are taking it to a whole different level. This is the worst that you ever can see. Having the flashiest ice is only half the battle. In A-Town, it has to come custom-made to stand out from the rest of the blinged-out crowd. This is, this minor right here. Where'd you get that platinum chain with them diamonds in it? If you're doing anything under 10 carats as a rapper in Atlanta, get lost. There's no place for you there. <laughs> Take Young Jeezy. The My President rapper flashes his $100,000 60-carat diamond and platinum-encrusted USDA pendant. Waka Flocka Flame sports a 100 grand iced-out fozzy bear. Soldier Boy unloaded an astounding half million dollars on this yellow and white diamond chain. And Atlanta's newest resident, Rick Ross, has a $1.5 million pendant of his own face. Y'all look out for that slow big. What about Usher? The Atlanta native and R&B superstar has sold 65 million records worldwide, making him one of the best-selling artists in history. And he's stockpiling more than Grammys. Usher actually collects watches, and he has 40 watches valued at $2 million. Mm -hmm. 
When he was promoting his Uber hit album Confessions, Usher commissioned a very special timepiece for his collection. This $250,000 diamond encrusted stunner. The 10 karat watch has about 1,100 stones that form the shape of Usher's face. When you're Usher and you want to be like, oh, what time is it? It's like, oh, it's Usher time. Yeah, we get wild and get loose and crazy. But the title of self-promoting blinking belongs to Atlanta's own Lil John. As the founding father of crunk music, his crunk ain't dead chain holds a special place in his heart. And there's nothing little about it. Lil John is basically wearing a newborn on his chest. Yeah! We headed to Jason of Beverly Hills to get a look at just how this record-breaking pendant was conceived. The crunk ain't dead diamond pendant went down as the Guinness Book World Records largest diamond pendant ever created. Little John wanted to go big. He wanted to go flashy. He also wanted the world to know that crunk ain't dead. And there's no better way to do that than to wear a billboard made of diamonds around your neck. This pendant has over 3,700 individual diamonds set onto 18 karat yellow gold. It's over seven and a half inches tall and weighs over five pounds. The pendant takes over my entire chest. The massive diamond marble cost an equally monumental half million dollars with every detail designed by the Crunk King himself. He knew exactly what he wanted to a T, down to the font, the size, the shape of the lettering, the type of diamonds and the style. Lil John wanted to create a historic piece. Then what better way than the Guinness Book of World Records? Check him out. Atlanta celebs aren't just setting bling records around their necks. I gotta have cool shades on. No one knows better than boxing great Floyd Mayweather that diamonds are a girl's best friend. Hey. The undefeated champ has been engaged twice to the same woman. And each engagement ring is a total knockout. Mayweather met model Chantel Jackson in Atlanta in 2005, and he popped the question twice. The first rock was an 18-carat sparkler worth $2.5 million. A few years later, that got outshined by a 25-carat fancy intense yellow diamond valued at a reported $10 million. He's not called Money Mayweather for nothing. I don't know what she's doing to get these gifts, but she needs to teach some classes, okay? <laughs> Listen to the track! And in Atlanta, diamonds aren't just for jewelry, because the biggest stars here are wearing them on their feet. Like Big Boy. The Outcast star took a pair of $200 Air Force Ones and blinged them to the brink of insanity. Ever hear of the rare chocolate champagne diamond? They're even rarer now because of these babies. So y'all check that out. Yeah. Man. For sure. This is the $50,000 SoCal Air Force One made for Big Boy. It has gone down as one of the most expensive sneakers in the world. What makes the shoe $50,000 is the 13 carats that are intricately sewn into the shoe using gold lace. The sneakers were shipped all the way to the diamond source in India, where a team of artisans worked round the clock for a full month to stitch these sick treads. They sewed about 70 chocolate diamonds on each swoosh of the sneaker. Chocolate diamonds were chosen to contrast the stitching that goes around the base of the tennis shoe. It's the entertainment business. You gotta shine. And good luck finding these at the mall. Because not only are they the most expensive sneaks in all the land, they're also one of a kind. I've gotten hits from people in Thailand, London, Dubai. I haven't made anything like it, so it's one of one. That's the sneaker game, y'all. Coming up, one of the rarest cars on the planet. I'm going to keep it moving. I'm trying to get more in the future. That's testosterone for your ass. And find out why Atlanta rappers get their pearly whites blinged out by this guy. I turn thugs to players. When the fabulous life of Atlanta continues. Everybody wanna be famous. Atlanta.
Toronto may have a world-class public transportation system, but when you're a celeb, you ain't toting a motor car to get around town. I'm too fast for y'all, man. When Ludacris signed up for the Fast and Furious franchise, it wasn't just to get some acting cred. He happens to own his own fast cars and lots of them. What you gonna do? Act a fool! That's right. The rapper turned actor has a fleet of some of the fastest and most expensive cars on the planet. Come on, man. That's crazy. The vast collection is estimated at a jaw-dropping $2.3 million. There's a $200,000 Bentley Continental GT, a 240 grand McLaren 12C, and a Rolls-Royce Phantom Drop Coupe valued at 450 Gs. And if you're a Fast and the Furious star and you don't have a sick car collection, get lost! And Luda's need for speed has no limits. When he wants to test the horsepower of his magnificent machines, Ludacris doesn't have to worry about getting pulled over by Atlanta 5.0. When Ludacris bought his new Ferrari, the top speed is 200 miles an hour. Of course, he knew that he couldn't go, like, drag racing out on the streets of Atlanta, so he rented out the entire Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR racetrack extended some southern hospitality to Ludacris for the bargain price of 12 grand, giving him the whole day to take his $230,000 Ferrari to the limit. That's testosterone for your ass. Yeah, but the most testosterone-fueled car in Luda's lineup is imported all the way from Detroit. The rarest car in Luda's collection is the Chrysler MB412. Only two were made as concept cars, and Luda, being the collector that he is, reportedly got his hands on one. The ticket price for the rare prototype? An estimated three quarters of a million dollars. Vroom, vroom. Usher can be seen zipping around the streets of Atlanta on one of his many motorcycles. Chris, come on, hook it up, man. While most celebrities really love collecting cars, Usher is really into motorcycles. He's got two Ducatis, he's got a brawler. When it comes to motomania, he got it bad. His hog collection alone is valued at an estimated $90,000. Come on, kids, get in the damn car. But when Usher chooses four-wheel transportation, his luxury car of choice is a Mercedes-Benz. When Usher first made it and he got that big check, he treated his mom and himself to a new Mercedes. That's the truth. <laughs> oh, how sweet. And now that Usher's paychecks are even bigger, he's upped his game. Because when he wants a new Benz, he doesn't just pop into a dealership. He travels to Mercedes headquarters in Germany to build one. Usher flew to Germany and helped to assemble the engine in his own personalized SLS AMG. Starting price for the custom luxury vehicle? A cool 200K. This one. It's like the cream of the crop. But the undisputed automotive status symbol for Atlanta celebs is a Bentley. Just ask ATL's hottest couple, R&B beauty Ciara and her boo, rapper Future. Typically, you frown upon couples that have matching anything, right? Like, matching outfits? No. Ciara and Future, however, get a pass because they have matching Bentleys. You know what? I feel very happy about that thing. <laughs> the price tag for the matching Bentleys? A total of 420000 But hip-hop stars aren't the only ones sporting Bentleys in the ATL. A day after cruising in bestie Tyler Perry's new Bentley GT Sports Coupe, talk show queen Oprah received an unexpected gift. Her very own matching one, valued at a reported $250,000. She commented, Tyler, I really like your car. Tyler Perry, being the nice guy that he is and a great friend, decides to send Oprah as a surprise gift her very own Bentley. And guess who else got their own Bentley from Mr. Perry? 
Oprah's other BFF, Gail. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's half a million dollars of fine British engineering. You get a car, you get a car, and you get a car. Cars for everybody. Ladies, it's your song, so as soon as this come out, you should get out on the floor, go and get your sexy out. out. Girls have become pretty mainstream now. Katy Perry has them, Madonna has them, Miley Cyrus has been sporting them. Everybody's got grills. The pop world may have gone wild for grills in recent years, but hip-hop artists have been flashing their golden chompers for decades. Grills have been around in hip-hop for a really long time. Really, the whole thing started in the South. Ludacris has $5,000 worth of gold in his mouth. Lil John's custom platinum and diamond set cost 50 grand. And CeeLo sports $15,000 in diamond tooth decorations. CeeLo, he has his glued on. I don't even think he can take his off. Yes, ATL celebs sport more grills than a backyard barbecue. And whether they want magnificent molars or improbable incisors, they look no further than the self-proclaimed godfather of the grills, Eddie Plain. Having a grill is a status symbol. I turn killers to ballers, and I turn thugs to players. Players like Luda, Chingy, and Lil Jon, some of the most famous pearly whites in the world, have been blinged out by the Godfather. It's an offer they can't refuse. This happens to be one of the first sets for CeeLo. You can tell that's CeeLo, right? Paid about 4500 But it was Atlanta's own big boy that put Eddie's on the map when his $5,000 grill hit a worldwide audience. Yeah, yeah. He was going to the Grammys. The white gold or the platinum became the rays. Big boy got the Grammy and saw his teeth glittering. Made me very proud. Before Eddie, rappers in Atlanta were getting permanent gold teeth. But when he introduced the removable grill, a dental flare revolution was born. Just ask D-Rock from the Yin Yang Twins. He dropped eight G's on his one-of-a-kind diamond and gold mouthpiece. It was like a serious experiment. Every other teeth is gold. And then we had to solder them together. And then they have block of diamonds and the godfather's always looking to expand his business i see p diddy i see kanye they might need to holler at me to get them some real professional eddie golds coming up find out why a town is the newest entertainment capital of america tyler perry has built an entire little hollywood for himself right there in atlanta and we'll uncover the wealthiest media moguls in the ATL. This man can do everything. Kind of like a, a Superman in a way. When the fabulous life of Atlanta returns. <laughs> Atlanta is the entertainment industry's newest media capital. We've kind of always associated with music, but now TV there, film, really has become the Hollywood of the South. The entertainment industry in Hotlanta generates $3 billion a year. With that much showbiz mojo, Atlanta celebs are shrugging off Hollywood, doing it their own way in the ATL. The key to the real success is to diversify. So that's exactly what all these hip-hop artists in Atlanta are doing, and they're making millions doing it. Take young Jeezy. He started out hustling his mixtapes on the streets of Atlanta. Today, he's not just a superstar on the mic, he's stacking paper as CEO of his own business, Corporate Thugs Entertainment. Jeezy is also an executive. He's a senior VP of a &R at Atlantic Records. His endorsement deal with Adidas is also bringing in some serious cheddar. A reported $10 million. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Luda is unstoppable. His money is astronomical. Sell as many records as a nigga like me that is just impossible. Chris Ludacris Bridges has done good by his hometown. The mogul is worth an estimated $65 million, raking in $12 million a year from his varied empire. Back your record label still pays me. 
Ludacris has won the most successful business portfolios in hip hop, covering everything from his own Conjure Cognac to his own headphone line. Luda has his own label, Disturbing the Peace, and he's actually the one that got 2 chains started in the industry. Oh, and those little movies he stars in, The Fast and the Furious, they've grossed 2.4 billion worldwide. And it seems like every hit song over the past 10 years was featuring Ludacris. Everybody loves to work with this guy. Atlanta boy Usher has been an unstoppable force since first bursting on the scene as a youngin' in 1994. Wow. Today, the 35-year-old seasoned superstar has sold 65 million records worldwide, earned eight Grammys, and has built one massive empire. I'm kind of like a, a Superman in a way, you know? He has his very own Usher MasterCard. He has his own perfumes for men and women. He's even part owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, so you know he's not just sitting courtside. He's in the owner suite. As judge of The Voice, he got a cool $7 million. His estimated net worth is a staggering $110 million. Oh, yeah, he also happened to discover this kid. This whole thing's been just incredible. But the biggest, baddest mogul in Atlanta is a sassy, pistol-packing granny, a.k.a. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is really the undisputed media king of Atlanta. This man can do everything. Perry writes, produces, directs, and stars in his own films. And the one-man show has earned a personal fortune of $400 million. Hollywood is finally taking a look at black movies and saying, look how much these films can make. That means a great deal to me. It really does. So how much can they make? Perry's 15 independent films have grossed a mind-blowing $1 billion. Tyler Perry loves Atlanta so much that he founded his own Tyler Perry Studios right in his own backyard. The movie magnate converted two former airplane hangars into a 200,000-square-foot facility with five sound stages, a 400-seat theater, and private screening rooms. The price tag for his bespoke studio? A whopping 40 million. That's my world, though. That's my world, my mind. Gotta get it done. Move on to the next thing. Tyler Perry has built an entire little Hollywood for himself right there in Atlanta. Watch your back, Tinseltown. Coming up, Atlanta celebrities use their extensive clout. He took over the entire city of Atlanta. All in the name of charity. Next, on The Fabulous Life of Atlanta. Stop looking at what you ain't got. Start being thankful for what you do got. Slaves in Atlanta spend big, but they give back bigger to the city they love so much. Stars in Atlanta aren't just some of the biggest ballers in showbiz. They're also among the most charitable. Artists like Big Boy, Akon, and Luda all have charitable foundations that generate millions of dollars. Usher's Dula Charity donated a million dollars to a Clinton Initiative youth program. But one of the biggest humanitarians in Atlanta is Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry really came from nothing, and at one point he was even living out of his car. He's since made a whole lot of money, but he's found a way to give back. And he gives back big. He's donated a million dollars to the NAACP, another million bucks to Haiti earthquake relief, and six figures a year to an Atlanta-based food bank. He even built an 88-year-old woman a new house when he heard that she lost hers in a fire. Being in a position that I've, you know, been blessed to be in, I just wanted to do something to help her. And when the most powerful man on earth needs to raise a few bucks, guess who he calls on? When Obama was running his campaign in 2012, he took a trip down to Atlanta for two different events hosted by Tyler Perry. He had one that was $10,000 a head. Then he had one at his own private residence, and that was $36,000 a person. 
Five hours later, the Prez was headed back to D.C. with a cool five mil, courtesy of Mr. Perry's fundraiser. That's a lot of bumper stickers. Stand up! Stand up! When hometown hero Ludacris throws a charity event, he uses his keys to the city to take over the whole damn town. We all know Labor Day, but down in Atlanta, it's Luda Day weekend. Only somebody like Ludacris could take over the entire city of Atlanta. Stand up! All in the name of charity. That's right. Luda invites his well-heeled homies to the ATL for a weekend of parties, sporting events, and some serious fundraising. It's all about giving back, never forgetting where you come from, and that's why it's important for me to be here to support. The three-day celebration is one of the largest charity events in Georgia. Everyone comes there and he has all these different events and he has celebrity basketball games and people donate money. Last year he raised over $100,000 benefiting various youth organizations. It was from the heart. I mean, everything I do is from the heart. If I got one life to live, I'm a party till I'm dead. For these celebs, Georgia is always on their mind. And they're always ready to give back by breaking off a piece of their hard-earned scratch. So thanks for keeping it real and keeping it fab, AT Aliens. I think we showed them a hell of a time. What you Man, about you? Hell yeah, we showed them a good time. Thanks for showing me around, shoddy.